Welcome to Pitt. History Nuts. I'm Russ Carson Jr., the founder of Family Tree Nuts. At Family Tree Nuts, we build family trees for people and we produce videos at historic locations and videos that help to honor your ancestors. I'm Jameson Cable, founder of the Kentucky History Podcast, where we talk about anything Kentucky history, events, people, if it has to do with Kentucky, we're going to discuss it. And we've teamed up together to bring you History Nuts. History Nuts is a live show where we talk about, you guessed it, history. Right. History seems to be less and less to people today, but we are trying to do everything we can to keep it alive. Absolutely. History is a passion of ours for sure, but it connects to you. Russ, tell us about the best part of the show. You can join in. You can comment and ask questions live. We've got a great topic today, and we know you're going to enjoy this episode of History Nuts. And we are live. We are live. Man, I'm excited about this one. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts with, once again, my guest, or my buddy. Jameson Cable, Kentucky History Podcast, Kentucky History Channel. I'm not a what? You're not a guest. No, not. You're my partner here, man. What's yeah, yeah, but I'm not, uh, yeah. Weekly occurrence, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right, man. Uh, you know, we got especially after what we did the other day, right? That's right, man. Scale or uh, traced all over crab orchard. Chased all over crab orchard. <laughs> crab orchard, guys. If you haven't seen those videos, make sure you check out uh, uh, either one of our Facebooks or YouTube pages to uh, see some of those videos. They're in the editing process right now, and I am stoked about those. But uh, man, I am excited, excited, excited about this uh, episode right here. It's going to be a good one, I do believe. Uh, something maybe not everybody knows about, but a little bit of uh, controversy. Controversy. I mean, it's got it all. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's got a lot of stuff in it for sure. It does. Uh, Sue Monday, uh, she ain't no Southern Belle, was she? <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. She ain't no but, Southern Belle. So, uh, but before we get started, oh. comment, tell us where you're at, uh, where you're watching from, and um, maybe some, maybe if some people who know some more about it. I mean, this is a pretty uh, deep deep um, historical gem, if you want to call it that. What call it that? Pretty yeah, it's a controversial. Stuff. It's controversial period because it's civil war. It's more controversial yeah, because it's Confederate. It's more controversial mm -hmm. because it's guerrilla. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. regular army. It's more controversial because of. Well, I don't want to get too stuff. much of the story. <laughs> this one's controversial, <laughs> isn't it? Kind it is. Thing. It is. It is. So, yeah, so you ready? To get, you ready to get rolling, man? Or yeah, yeah. I'm really right before we do, if you like, if you like these kind of videos, a lot of people say, "Hey, I didn't, I didn't catch the show live." Remember, you can watch this anytime on either the Kentucky History Podcast or Family Tree Nuts' YouTube channel. It'll be on there forever. Um, you'll be able to mm -hmm. check that out. So, uh, and make sure you subscribe, you know, so you don't miss stuff like this. You can watch it anytime. It's absolutely free. People say, "How much do I got to pay to subscribe?" It's daggone free. That way, you just get a free. notification when we post stuff. So. Now I'm and ready. That's right. Uh, what, I was gonna say too. I, I posted uh, the front one of the comments on uh, um, to uh, subscribe to the channel. So the link to the uh, YouTube channel, if you're watching from Facebook, is already uh, already uh, there. <laughs> I already got a comment yeah. that says uh, Don uh, Don Gillum says sounds very controversial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. it's pretty controversial. Yeah, All right, yeah. so. Uh, Ready to go? Man, we got we got people watching from down on the Ohio River, California, North Carolina. Uh oh, it's gonna get crazy. There we go. But, so uh, yeah, man. So Sue Monday, she's a Who bad is Sue chick. Monday? Is oh, definitely, definitely. So Sue Monday was a lot of things: a, a Confederate, uh, a guerrilla, an outlaw, and a Kentuckian. So all that mixed up in one big pot. Uh, you're going to get a lot of a uh, lot of problems, um, or well, it's going to lead to a lot of problems. I guess I should say. What's a gorilla? Uh, well, so that's a good question. <laughs> um, so, if you think of a gorilla, I would I would define it. You may you may have a better definition of a 
I wouldn't say an ex-prisoner because they don't necessarily have to have been a prisoner of war, but it's a soldier, I guess, who's on their own doing what they want, I guess, in, the, like in the eyes of, yeah, yeah, kind of going rogue. That's, that's a good way to say it. They've gone rogue, and they're kind of doing what they want for their cause, even though there's no leadership or guidance really in the higher up rank. That, that makes right. sense. Sound yeah. good? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, kind of like a pirate. You know, they're definitely uh, working yeah. for the greater cause of things, but they're uh, on their own kind of thing and who they're taking their orders from. And, uh, man, I got to tell you, you know, I'm jumping ahead just a tad, but can you imagine that life? No, oh, no, man. That's, I mean, that's a wild life to, you know, take in, you know. <laughs> because to, these to gorillas gonna... are, 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 are you know, doing what they want. They're, they're robbing banks. Mm -hmm. They're burning down supply centers, you know, robbing stage coaches, uh, killing union soldiers, you know, kind of thing. They're just a rowdy, <laughs> rowdy bunch. But man, yeah. you know what? Like I heard somebody tell you, there's a friend of mine named Rick Allen. He said, history's like a pancake, man. No matter how flat it is, there's always two sides. So uh, there's Thank another you, side of the yeah. coin <laughs> that, uh, you, you know, that, yeah, absolutely. So I think Rick's probably watching right now, but uh, that, that was a great quote. So mm -hmm. who so, is Sue Mundy? So Sue Mundy, uh, I, I, I say Sue Mundy. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be Sue Mundy uh, because I think whenever they were originally, the first article uh, was a typo. They, it was supposed to be Sue Mundy, but they said Mun Mundy, and so that kind of stuck. Uh, but so she was a female gorilla who went around robbing and murdering in Kentucky. And I mean, some of the stories that have been told are just gruesome, uh, terrible, terrible stories. Um, an article from the Louisville Democrat, oh, sorry, yeah, the Louisville Democrat said that, it was an article stating that a town had just you know, heard that Sue Monday was close or she, uh, she had just been through, and they had, her, her and her guerrilla group a uh, unit, I, I, I guess I could call it a unit, uh, shot four men. And as they were uh, going out of the community, they uh, came across the commander uh, or a, um, um, this is near Bardstown. So Bardstown, the turnpike in Bardstown, if you want to say that. Uh, they came across a mail carrier, killed the mail, mail carrier, um, you know, left him you know, dying where they, they found him. And then rode off and robbed everybody that they met on the turnpike. Um, that's a little story, um, but pretty much uh, there's a lot of stories that are very similar to that. That all now you're, in, you're making Sue Monday out to be a, a bad guy or a bad girl. Yep, yep, and it's funny you say that because in a way, the uh, Louisville Journal who wrote a lot of articles about Sue Monday. Uh, kind of didn't make her out so much that way. It was more of a Robin Hood, sort of, to say it that way. You know, was taking it to the Union sympath uh, sympathizers and stealing from the Union people. And uh, would if any soldiers they they ran into, they killed any Union soldiers. And kind of like this Robin Hood uh, hero theme or vibe. A hero. Right. A hero. Hero. Yeah, hero. Or heroin. Yeah. Heroin. I guess you should say what. But but you just said that they're going around and killing people, man, killing not non-combatants and 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 stealing things so from people and thing. Isn't that isn't that uh, that's not, that's an anti-hero, isn't it? Well, it depends on what side you're on. <laughs> you know, if you're on uh, the uh, Confederate side, you know, Sue Monday may be doing what you uh, would want want them to want her to do. Uh, but if you're on the union side, you know, she would be, she would be the bad guy for sure. Um, but let's say before we get too that's much. That's a great into way it, to look at it. It's a great way to look at it. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of like we were talking just the other day, you know, I mean, we, we often today judge people of yesterday by today's standards and kind of not I fair to do that. that up all the time. No. Hey, why'd you wear uh, that great t-shirt today, man? This great t-shirt? Look, I got my blue on, man. You got that gray. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. oh no, I already no. figured out the way you're leaning in this story, man. I figured out the way you're leaning in this story. So <laughs> that was subliminal. <laughs> <laughs> so 
the speaking of that, you, you, you want to talk about the blue or the union guy who was in Kentucky at this time. Uh, oh, Stephen, is it Ganu Burbridge? Also known as Butcher Burbridge. The uh, Butcher. The Butcher. The butcher. His, <laughs> sole purpose, his sole purpose was to come into Kentucky and take care of these gorillas. Because uh, as we said, Sue Monday was a gorilla, but there was more than just, just her. There was many out there that were causing chaos. And, and I mean, that's really the best way to say it. They were just causing chaos, you know. Um, you know, taking in Union uh, supply lines, just doing whatever they could. to um, Montreal's Raiders. Yep, yep, that's one. Uh, but anyway, so he was in, he was in the, um, he was there, he was sent to Kentucky just to do this. And man, he was hated by, I would say, a lot of people. And I wouldn't necessarily say just people on the Confederate side. I would say even people on the Union side hated him because he was the one enforcing this martial law. And we'll get to this in a little bit too, but like he was setting up these orders and pretty much these orders were kill on sight, uh, take whoever they wanted um, and, and on and on and on. Um, so it was, it was really good uh, or it was, it was not really good. I mean, it was really. Yeah, I, I, so I'm glad you brought that up because you know, this is the same stuff. It sounds like Sherman to me, man. You know, it sounds like mm -hmm. Sherman, but it, and Sherman's a name that most people know about. But I'd be willing to say if you walked out, if you went to your local Walmart and asked them if they knew about General Burbridge, and I'm talking about people here in Kentucky, there probably wouldn't be one out of 100 that even knows who he is, right? No, no. And about everything you can talk about or I, that I found about him, the biggest common factor is how much people hated him. And I mean, it was both sides hated him. And even, even Lincoln got to the point where he stepped in and got him out of there. Cause it was such, it was so bad. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I, I, I want to emphasize the hate for this guy. <laughs> uh, so right. where does that lead us? That lead, leads us to the Louisville journal. And the editor of the Louisville Journal, George Prentice. And he's, he's actually a very controversial guy as well. And we can talk about him more later. That's where this story takes a turn. Sue Mundy is not real. Yeah, yeah, she is, man. We've got all kinds of proof of uh, things that she did, and it, we're going to get into, you know, that, uh, you know, about the different issues that she went or, or, uh, activities that uh, her and her men did right <laughs> well no we're not sumundi is not real man sumundi was created by george prentice for one cause to make butcher burbridge look like a fool <laughs> some propaganda it, it, propaganda to its fullest now let's say the the legend of sumundi that's real but Sue Mundy, the person, was not. Uh, and it was all just, it was all made up to uh, make a, a Burbridge look bad, look stupid. And, you know, I guess it did, it probably, in a way, did that. So, well, they they said, you know, he, he created that character to, to say, look at this. Uh, it, it, we just got this little old country girl woman that's over there making this mm -hmm. big bad general look like, look, look stupid. This guy yep. is so incompetent, he's trying to rule with an iron fist here around Kentucky and bring law and order and martial law to Kentucky, and he can't control this little old gal out here that's yep. uh, whooping up on the Union Army. <laughs> but uh, I think it had its effect, didn't it? I think so. I think it worked. I think it, I think it did. Um, now, and when we, get, we can get into the um, – I guess the uh, actual events, if you want to call it that, but uh, I think it worked, and I think that just that that made Burbridge become more uh, aggressive with his orders and trying to catch Sue Mundy, and we'll get into the, the the more of that stuff here in a little bit. But that was kind of the push, you know, that was the push to kind of catch Sue Mundy, and it kind of made him go crazy in a way to say that, and then. It got he pushed the limits too far, and Lincoln, you know, steps in eventually and takes him out. He says, you, you, "You're out. You're leaving, man." Um, but so 
let's talk about the real Sue Mundy. Are you, are you ready? I thought you said she Article. was fake. Ah, uh, no. Well, kind of, you mean, but no. You're confusing me, Jameson. You said that uh, <laughs> Sue Mundy was fake. Now you're saying let's talk about the real Sue Mundy. There's got to be some uh, more oh. to this story. Well, this is this is this is uh, 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 Kim Watts. I, you probably don't know. I know. Her. Good friend. Uh, she says my granny told stories about burning men's clothes so that the other side didn't know they were there, and the men hid if uh, found, and they were they were killed if they were found. So uh, we're gonna get into that just in a minute. Uh, so a story in a newspaper long ago uh, told about how a lady's mother and her father met. And it goes all the way back to uh, 1864 in, uh, in Kentucky. And there was a, a lady or a, a Confederate spy who everybody knew about who was coming to town. And this was the alleged Sue Mundy. And a, a, a Sue Mundy came to town and would hang out with this girl. And then they would go to the, I don't want to say, the, let's say the ballroom dances. There was a dance practice they would go to. And while they were there, they would flirt. This girl and Sue Mundy would flirt with his, uh, the Union gen or the Union soldiers to try to get information. And they got to the point that they eventually found out that Sue Mundy was in the area. And they would then, um, they then had to hide Sue Mundy in order to get her out. And I say, keep saying her, but it's actually a Confederate spy. And it was a male who had feminine features, long, long black curl, or I don't want to say curly, but flowing hair. Is that a good description? Like you. Wavy hair, maybe? Oh, yeah. There you go. Exactly, man. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, so they, they, used the, they, they used this tactic more than once. They would bring, Sue Mundy would go to these places and would uh, you know, pretend and, and actually flirt with the Union soldiers in order to get uh, information. And then uh, eventually, of course, they would catch on to, to uh, him and he would have to go. So, so yeah. Story, oh, wow. That story is old as time, man. Sending, sending them gals at loose lips sink ships, man. You know, <laughs> loose lips sink ships. I remember some uh, Russian gals when I was in uh, Korea that uh, were trying to pump us full of information, you know, kind of thing mm -hmm. like that. That in those islands. And I was like, guys, don't, why are you talking to those gals, man? You know, they're asking little bits of information kind of thing. You get a little <laughs> bit of information from one guy, a little bit of information from another. Pretty soon you can put the whole puzzle together and figure it out. So story is yeah. old as time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so, so that, that that's one article I found. And I'm going to eventually put these articles up on uh, you know the website. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit because they're so interesting to, to read because um, you know they just all fit right here in the in the story. And there's a multiple. Yeah, you know, I found four or five just the same kind of stories of Sue Mundy's in town. Everybody run, everybody hide. Or Sue Mundy's in town here to spy or whatever it may be, you know, um, different, different sorts of ways. So, um, let's get on. It sounds, to like, a, it a little bit of, sounds like it created a little bit of hysteria in the communities, didn't it? Definitely. Yes. And, and I mean, if you know, Sue money and her, her crew's coming, you know, what's going to happen, you know, hide if, you know, if you're a union, you better hide or, uh, if you're, you know, you know, show, uh, you know, what if you're, you're a Confederate, you know, you're, you'll be okay or however it may be. And a lot of this too, I, I don't know a hundred percent, but I'm pretty sure most of this was in like the western part of the state, or at least yeah. west of, say, Louisville, Bardstown, those areas. I don't know if it yeah. ever really crossed over into say, the Lexington, or I know not in eastern Kentucky. So, um, so that's kind of the area. Um, but we need to talk about another gorilla, Captain Marcellus Jerome. We're gonna talk about Harambe what? now. We're gonna talk about Harambe. <laughs> oh. Hey, easy, hey. easy. Rip, rip Harambe, man. So, uh, so, I actually saw Harambe about a month before he passed from this earth. But uh, that martyr for, for uh, <laughs> some people are googling Harambe right now, you know. But uh, all right, yeah, yeah. anyway, all right, bad joke. <laughs> so. Captain Marcellus Jerome Clark was a Confederate soldier and he wore his hair long and he had smooth features. Um, 
I, I don't want to say, you know, petite or anything like that, but, you know, he had a, 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 um, a, a his frame wasn't typical. Again. He's a pretty boy. He's a pretty boy. That's a good way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. So he was a, he was born in Franklin, Kentucky, uh, 1844. He enlisted in, at the age of 17 in the yeah. Confederate army as the, in the first Kentucky orphan brigade. So, yeah. um, got in, got in early. Um, he ended up getting captured. Uh, he escaped though. Fort uh, Donaldson. At a chick- chick- do what? Fort Donaldson. He was captured. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, he, uh, was reassigned to Morgan's men, uh, and, and became, became a captain there. Um, Back up. you're, you're just flying through that, man. I'm flying. You're flying Sorry, man. Sorry. Yeah, man. He, he's a daggone private. He's a 17 year old buck private. And now you just got him as a captain. You don't do that by not being one heck of a daggone soldier. I mean, this yeah, guy yeah. was a daggone soldier, man, and a motivator and, a, and, uh, a very great example to his soldiers. He was a POW and escaped. Mm-hmm. And then he got yep. assigned to Morgan's men. He didn't get assigned. Now, we, you and I talked about Morgan the other day. Morgan uh, is an absolute icon to people here in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Well, those that root for the gray side, you know. But uh, <laughs> he didn't get assigned to Morgan's Raiders because he was daggone knucklehead. I mean, this guy was a real, real warrior. He was a real tough guy and uh, rose to the rank of captain and uh, mm-hmm. rode with Morgan's on his raids into Kentucky. Now I'll shut up and let you go back. So. All right. All right. <laughs> That's good. So so uh, anyway, so he took part in Morgan's last raid. Uh, and upon uh, once uh, Morgan died, uh, in September 4th, uh, he actually for- formed his own band of uh, guerrillas. And um, uh, and uh, from October 1864 till for, for a while, I don't want to give anything away just yet, but he raided, um, killed Union troops, you know, supply, supply uh, trains, all that stuff, all those, all those things. He ended up teaming up with Contra- Quantrail's raiders as well. And you know, basically doing the same thing. You all run around, you know, taking care of uh, uh, supply, supply trains, killing soldiers. And, you know, I, I don't want to get into too many of the stories because there's a lot of stories and some of them are very gruesome. Um, but anyway, you want to hear one? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, these guys are kind of like pirates, man, you know, and that that's the key. Yes. You said something key that I think we need to, to highlight right now to bring up later. He formed his own band. That's a big deal. Yeah. It's a big deal mm-hmm. as we move forward there. But uh, yeah, let's hear some of that stories. So, the, so in a town in in Kentucky, there was a, there was word that you know Sue Mundy was coming, and uh, or, or raiders. I, I this it may not have been specific to Sue Mundy, but um, a woman or a girl and her boyfriend or her uh, I guess fiance, who, who was a Union uh, soldier. Uh, w- was at home and they were, uh, they'd heard, so they were kind of feel fearful. He left and the the outlaws, if you want to, or the guerrillas came back and kind of questioned her and this and that. And he kind Wait of a minute, outlaws? Him. I thought you were on a great team. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Well, we'll just tell the story here. All right, all right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Don't take a side, just tell the story. <laughs> so, uh, so. She she told him, hey, you know, he's gone, he's not here, and they left. Well, he came back foolishly, you know, came back, and uh, you know they were there eating their dinner, and of course they came. The uh, gorillas came back, and they they didn't know what to do, so they he they hid him in a clock, and you know I'm talking about a big old you know grandfather kind of style clock, and you know put him in there, keep him quiet. Uh, they busted in the door, and were actually very calm and tame. You know, you, you know, she kind of was expecting them to just come out blazing, but they, they didn't. They came in. Uh, they demanded some food and drinks, and she got it all for them. She prepared it. She had them all set. And, and then she went back into the kitchen to, um, you know, I, I guess get something else. And they opened fire on the uh, clock. And she, she, she rushed back in, and all, the, all she saw was her uh, fiancé's body flopping out of the clock, uh, out of the clock bed. And the, uh, the, uh, um, gorillas just pretty much said, 
nothing and left. <laughs> you know, uh, right. and they, they, of course, they went on to say how, how it kind of pretty much traumatized her for the rest of her life, and uh, which is, you know, understandable. Yeah. Pretty, pretty dramatic. Yeah, uh, I mean, all is, but, all is fair in war, you know, kind of thing. All is fair in love and yeah. war, they say, but, uh, I mean, that's, it was war, you know. Yep. Yeah. It was yeah. war, but uh, there's a there's a gray area there because they were guerrillas. So yeah, how, how do you? Well, we'll get to that. So anyway, they uh they go on. Uh, he, uh when we're back to uh, again, we're talking about uh Marcellus Jerome Clark. Uh, he joins up with the Quantrails Raiders in like February eighteen sixty five. They raid raid and uh, they're actually in a place uh, Liar Station, Kentucky. And they burned down a railroad station and some cars, uh, which is pretty pretty extreme, of course. Um, but then they uh, get chased. Uh, well, not not that moment, of course. They're always kind of getting chased, I guess. Uh, but they get caught eventually in March twelfth, eighteen sixty five, in a tobacco barn, which is about ten miles uh, south of Brandenburg. Kentucky. Yeah, Brandenburg. Um, mm -hmm. My buddy uh, Montez you guys, you, up there, man. We did some videos yeah. in Brandenburg. And I think we'll show that one in a little bit, right? Or maybe yeah, yeah. We'll go to your YouTube that. channel and check it out. Yeah, man. Um, so they, um, uh, they they get caught. They get they get surrounded. Um, basically, uh, they're captured pretty much. Uh, uh, they're, they're taken from Brandenburg to uh, Louisville on a uh, steamboat. Steam now, I've heard, now, uh, now, you're just being a little bit, you, you know, you're not, you're not, you're, you're leaning a little more blue again in here kind of thing. Uh, the story <laughs> is, is that uh, Clark actually uh, killed four Union soldiers that were trying to get him in that tobacco barn. <laughs> kind of thing. So uh, you yes, forgot yes. to give the, uh, the, the other forgot side to, of the propaganda. Forgot to mention that. Uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically though, this is when things get pretty crazy when you're thinking of, uh, you know, like like we're saying, you know, war, war, and how this is all gets processed. Um, uh, they uh, um, uh, Clark uh, accuses Contrail of, um, uh, you know, he gets accused for a lot of things. I guess I should say Clark is blamed for a lot of things. Um, uh, there's a Reverend uh, Talbot, which is very interesting. Uh, we'll we'll talk about him a little bit maybe another day. But he visits Clark and uh, told him that uh, they're going to hang him, man. You know, the witnesses are here. The council's up. There is no council. Uh, you're going to get hanged pretty soon or the, ne the next day. Uh, things kind of move really fast and almost surprisingly fast. Why, you know, I'll throw a question to you. Why so fast, you think? Why are things happening so fast? I mean, he gets captured. He's on. He, there's no trial no, uh, or a three-hour trial, no council, no witnesses, and he's, but he's going to get hung the next day. All right. They bring him to Brandenburg, put him on a steamer. Everything's hush hush, you know. They've captured this mm -hmm. big gorilla, this famous guy, and uh, take him to Louisville. And no trial, man. Well, no I mean, trial. he had a trial. No, no, no defense counsel. No witnesses are speaking in his defense. Uh huh. Pretty surprising. I mean, you would think this would be a bigger deal, a big thing to kind of do. But like we were saying, this is a big deal, man. I mean, this makes me mad to think about. I mean, here's this guy. He's he's fighting. He's an enemy combatant. They've captured him. Now let me back up. My people wore blue. I'll just say that right now. <laughs> my, my ancestors wore blue. I, I have one third great grandfather that wore gray, but I have seven others that wore blue. And and but these guys brought him, gave him a trial, trial. Mm -hmm. No defense counsel and no witnesses. Three hours, uh -huh. find him guilty. Yeah, that's garbage, man. That's crazy. That's pretty wild. Now, and just just to set set the record straight, my ancestors were blue as well. But <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he asked, though. So you know, he he was pretty. I guess um, Clark was pretty sure his fate was coming. He has to be baptized. He wrote letters to his loved ones. He had a few requests. Uh, he requested that um, that his body be given to his aunt and buried in Franklin and buried in his Confederate uniform next to his parents. Uh, 
His last words were, I'm a regular Confederate soldier, not a guerrilla. I have served in, my, in the Army for nearly four years. I fought under General Buckner at Fort Donelson, and I belonged to General Morgan's command when I entered Kentucky. I believe in and die for the Confederate cause. A few days later, he was hung in Louisville. And that's, so his that's whole that. plea was like, hey, dude. I am an enemy combatant. I should be treated like a prisoner of war. I should be taken mm -hmm. in, you know, into custody and be a prisoner of war like so many other people were. But they wanted his behind hung. They yep. wanted him dead. Well, and it's funny. We talked about Burbridge and how Burbridge was basically brought to take care of these guerrillas. And which brings me to this point. He gets somebody. Clark that kind of resembles or can be, I guess, you know, used to say, hey, this is Sue Mundy. We, we've got him. Uh, we've killed him. We've taken care of this. You know, kind of like an escape goat. You know, this was his escape goat uh, to hang Clark and so forth. However, another twist coming. Was Clark Sue Mundy? Or was it somebody else? <laughs> All right. Are you ready for our next one? You asked me not to reveal any secrets, so I'm just kind of being quiet. You know, All right, hey, you're doing good. You're doing good. So Henry Magruder. <laughs> Henry Magruder. Oh, let's do take a quick commercial. All right, quick video. Oh, we got a, hey, make sure you hang with us. It's a really good video right here. We've got some mm -hmm. really good stuff to finish this video out. So uh, check this out real quick, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. William Grayson was born in 1739 at Bel Air Plantation, Woodbridge, Virginia. His parents were Benjamin and Susan Monroe Grayson. He went to school at the University of Pennsylvania. He attended the University of Oxford, where he graduated with a law degree. After college, he practiced law in Prince William County, Virginia. Grayson mingled with many notable founding fathers of the United States, like George Mason and George Washington. His family had many successful connections. His cousin was James Monroe. He married Eleanor Smallwood, sister of William Smallwood, the governor of Maryland, and they had five children. Grayson volunteered when the American Revolutionary War began. He was an aide to George Washington, and he was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel. Grayson recruited Grayson's regiment and fought in the Philadelphia Campaign. Grayson served in other forms during the war. He was on a commission dealing with war prisoners in 1778, and in 1779, he resigned to serve on the Congressional Board of War. He was an original member of the Society of Cincinnati, which was formed by Continental Army officers. After the war, Grayson was part of the Confederational Congress in 1785 and 1787. He helped pass the Northwest Ordinance and a provision that prohibited slavery in the Northwest Territory. He opposed the ratification of the new United States Constitution in 1788. He thought the Constitution wasn't enough for either the federal side or the state side. With the help of Patrick Henry, Grayson was elected to the United States Senate and served there until he died. He was one of two senators who opposed ratification. He died on March 12, 1790. He was the first senator of the United States to die in office. I hope you've enjoyed learning about William Grayson. He was a Revolutionary War soldier and had influence on the formation of the United States of America, even though he did have disagreements. What is his connection to Kentucky? Grayson, Kentucky, and Grayson County, the 54th County of Kentucky, were named after William Grayson. Also, his grandson, William Grayson Carter, was a Kentucky State Senator. Another grandson was Confederate General John Breckenridge Grayson. Don't forget to try out audibletrial.com slash kyhistorypod to get a free book of your choosing. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button for more Kentucky history content. If you'd like to support the channel, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. Find us on these social media platforms and check out the Kentucky History Podcast on these podcast platforms for more in-depth history of Kentucky. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.
And we're back, and we're back, man. That's a pretty yeah. good. That's a pretty good story there too. Yeah, pretty we interesting. Both. Oh, oh, William Grayson, man. William Grayson. Yeah, we did a little shift gears there, didn't we? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I really enjoy so, your videos, man. They're getting better and better and better. Thank you, thank you. Uh, go check them out if you want to learn a little more Kentucky history. We'll have some coming soon about Sue Monday. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Anyway. Hey, we we got a few comments. We ought to uh, yeah, go zero. through there. Looks like uh, Monica Monica says that I knew Jerome Clark did some terrible things, but I always felt sad for him. He was just a kid like so many others. Uh, the mm -hmm. story is one of tragedies of the war. He was a kid, man. He was a kid. I yeah. think there was like 2,400 people that stayed and watched. They said a lot of uh, young women came out and cried uh, to mm -hmm. see him hung kind of thing. Yep. Um, he was just a daggone kid. He died before he could even buy beer in today's world, to put that in perspective. He couldn't even, he was that young of a kid kind of thing. But uh, Alice says that she has uh, both blue and gray in her ancestors, and they were in-laws. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's happened oh. so much. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, old man Winter said he's reporting from, <laughs> from, reporting from uh, Washington State. Good Marine there. And uh, we... we uh, Let's see. Uh, Jim Jim says, I thought that uh, Sue Mundy was actually a guy. <laughs> uh, um, Reagan says, uh, for your information, there was a character named Monday in the, the uh, oldest legend of Kentucky, Jonathan Swift Silvermines. Hmm. Supposed to be mm -hmm. taking place prior to Boone coming to Kentucky. Interesting. Ooh, Didn't know that. Yeah. If that's why that name was used. And yeah. uh, he also says that uh, Sue Monday was in Midway, Kentucky, and there's a plaque there between Frankfurt and oh, Lexington. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I okay. wish I knew that because I was in Midway today. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have went and got that picture for us. And yeah. well, uh, not, Reagan also says no. Reverend Talbot. He related to the Talbots and uh, uh, Ta Talbot's Tavern in Barnstown, which I think is built in 1785. We, uh, probably. I think, there's a, yeah, I think there's a connection there. Um, yeah, my uh, my mother in law lives in uh, Midway, so uh, I may have to check check that out and find that. That'd be that'd be really cool. Um, yeah. So, so we got we talked about Sue Monday. We talked about Jerome Mar or Marcellus Jerome Clark. Now we're going to talk about Henry Magruder, and his story is very similar to Clark's. I mean, almost almost identical. Uh, he joined the Confederate Army at the age of seventeen. Served under uh, General Simon Buckner during the Battle of Fort Donelson. Um, he then uh, was captured, and uh, uh, he was uh, he was captured when uh, you know uh, Buckner surrendered. He escaped, joined another Confederate troop, and then um, fought in some. Uh, uh, he, he let's see, he was um, he was General Albert Johnson's personal bodyguard uh, during the Battle of Shiloh. Um, but then Johnston died. Uh, Magruder moved again and joined John Hunt Morgan's uh, Kentucky Cavalry Unit. Unit. You see the parallels. I mean, this is almost a little bit different, but mo uh, mainly parallels. <clears throat> um, he um, uh, when, when he joined uh, Morgan, of course. Um, uh, he, when Morgan died, he escaped and um, he was actually captured. Uh, but then he was uh, uh, able to escape again by crossing the Ohio River back into Kentucky. Um, now, he joined up with other Confederate soldiers, and um, they began guerrilla fighting and going, going and doing the same thing that Clark did and that what um, uh, um, Sue Mundy was uh, uh, said to have done as well. Uh, and Magruder, though, I mean, the, some of the, I mean, they're all horrible. Some of these crimes, but he would, he, uh, uh, they would burn African American men alive. You know, they would um, uh, kill Union soldiers. You know, uh, and if they had their wives, if they were with their wives and stuff, they would, you know, uh, rape them. Those kind of things. Very uh, bad stuff. Um, his gang was eventually captured, um, uh, but uh, Henry and some of the others were able to escape. And guess where they ended up? In a tobacco barn in Meade County, they were then surrounded and forced to surrender. You've heard the story before. Um, yeah, uh, Magruder was shot a few times de during this battle. Uh, he was uh, kind of very uh, badly injured, um, he but he was convicted. Lung, I think, wasn't he? Uh -huh. shot to the yep. 
he was convicted of being a terrorist and a spy, and he was actually hung in Louisville in October of 1865. So about, I think, what, did we say Clark was hung in March? Yeah. So about, you know, uh, 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 you know 15, yeah. yeah, so quite a few months later. But the reason he wasn't hung so soon is because he had to recover because he was, you know, which is crazy. You know? yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to try to nurse you back to health and then hang you. But, uh, right. <laughs> but he was, he was 21 when he died. Same, very similar to Clark. But the thing is, this is the interesting part about him that brings him in. Uh, he was rumored to have been Sue Mundy as well. Um, he was a gorilla. He attacked, you know, did all those things. Um, however, According to Henry Magruder himself, he was Sue Mundy. And he made this claim in one of his memoirs, uh, Three Years in the Saddle, The Life and Confessions of Henry Magruder, the original Sue Mundy, the scourge of Kentucky. So, there's that. Who is Sue Mundy? Who was I Sue Mundy? I don't know. You know, who, who is Sue Mundy? It's kind of like there was like 16 different people saying they were Billy the Kid. You know, kind of uh -huh. thing. You know, uh, you know. I thought Sue Mundy was a female. I know exactly, exactly. It's madness. I, I, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can uh, confirm that uh, Sue Mundy was 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 a man or Sue Mundy. Well, I mean, we are talking about Sue Mundy wasn't real. I guess is the really the real truth to it. Sue Mundy wasn't real. She was just made up, like we said, to antagonize Burbridge. Um, and it pretty much came down to Clark, who led some things, uh, or who led some escapades or some attacks that were similar to what Sumundi was supposedly doing, right. and then so was uh, Magruder was as boy. well. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to go to like who was most likely Sumundi, probably was Clark because he had that um, feminine, pretty boy look. I guess you know. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like, kind of like you know, my my locks of joy, joy here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and, and I, I, you know, something else that stood out with what you were saying is, you know, so often, so often people of history and, and even today, I guess, have uh, man, there's two sides to everything about that. Like one side thinking these guys are heroes riding into town. Mm -hmm tearing up rails, you know, bending, you know, rails so the railroad can't come through, murdering, butchering, yeah. killing, and raping, and, and these horrible mm -hmm. atrocities. But they're, half the people think they're heroes, and the other half the people think that they're demons. And that's yeah. why he did it. That's why Jerome, or Marcellus Jerome Clark, did not get a, a fair trial, really, because there was such outrage on the other side you don't deserve, you know, to be a POW. Mm -hmm. All the things that yeah. you've done, we're absolutely disgusted at what you've done kind of thing. And they had yeah. to be make an example out of him. You asked me about that in a minute. Why did that, a minute ago, why did that happen? They had to make an example of him to show yeah. power and quick, swift justice to put that down. His whole persona was trying to make fun of Burbridge, but uh, look what Burbridge did. And he's got the last laugh in the end kind of thing. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. There it's a serious situation, and we try not to get into civil war a whole lot around here because of that. So it is, and I mean, in Kentucky. I mean, Kentucky was a divided state by uh, big time. Um, yeah, we we say that. We just say that in passing. Ah, Kentucky was a neutral state when they divided. I'm talking about your next door neighbor was hated you, man. Could you imagine? Could you? And, and I'm going to say something. I, the only example I can come up with: imagine that half of your neighbors thought that nine nine eleven was 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 good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm that's, serious, that's pretty, man. I mean, imagine half of your neighbors I mean, people thought would be, nine one one was a great thing. I mean, that is you'd how you'd be calling the neighbor. Or you'd be calling on your neighbors saying, "Hey, these people over here are crazy," you know. And that's the way. Well, you'd be beating their beating their tail out in the front yard, one, you know, kind of thing. I mean, that, that, that's really how it was, man. I mean, people really, really were split that middle. They didn't just tolerate each other's differences. They absolutely hated each other. And some of that stuff even existed today. Yep, yep. And, and well, and, you know, we, I mean, we talk and you always want to learn from history and uh, 
that's not all it doesn't always happen um but yeah so like you had these people who who cheered on suman and helped sumundi or the idea of sumundi these uh confederate guerrillas um and then on the other hand you had people who were scared to death and something needed to be done to stop this and then i mean um you know the the toll, tolls of war i guess or you know however you want to say it that's what all this guts this is all of that coming to a head and um pretty crazy pretty wild um real quick though uh, my mother-in-law who's watching uh thanks for watching ask where in midway is that is the marker so if somebody can you know let us know where that marker is in midway that'd be good um it's probably right there in between the two railroad tracks right in the middle of town there's not yep. too many uh teresa teresa says that uh it was because of the atrocities that were done you know that, that's uh very true on both sides what they often don't realize is that they were grandsons of american revolutionary veterans who rem who remember uh what their ancestors did for the country that's very true a lot of these all a lot of the soldiers you know, you know go ahead what do you got yeah yeah you know, what, what, what was his last words oh yeah i i did this for uh uh, my country and the Confederate cause. Yeah. Sounds to me like uh, uh, Nathaniel Hale. I regret that I have but one life to give for my country. Or my only regret is that I have yep. but one life to give for my country. I mean, these people felt like they were, anyway, we're going down another path there. But, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. but uh, yeah, what a, what a complicated, messed up. Very complicated. It was. Yep. Man, it was complicated. So, yep. so, I mean, and back to the beginning, we, we, it, you know, um, Sue Monday is uh, is what a lot of people refer to it as. But I believe I believe that when George Prentice first wrote it, it meant he meant it to be Sue Monday. But it, uh, I guess the typo didn't put in the A, and it's like, it's spelled like Monday instead. Um, but it's very interesting. Very interesting. It's, it's definitely a surname, Monday. I was in the when I was when I first oh. was in the Marines. The commandant was General Monday, so. Uh, so another article. This is very. This is very um, interesting that I read was about this. So th I, this is very. I, I don't know how true this is, or if this was like the fictional creation of Sue Monday. So supposedly, uh, there was a, a girl named Sue Kirksville, Kirksville, Kirks or Kirksland. I think Kirksland, something like that. Uh, and she lived in a town in Kentucky, and her uh, uh, boyfriend or fiance. Um, his name was um, John Mundy, or or something similar to that. And the Union came in and, like, I guess, was raiding or uh, attacked this place. And the the boy's fa mother and father died, and this girl died. And so he supposedly took on the persona of Sue Mundy to honor her taking her first name and then he became the actual Sue Mundy. But you know, that was in a newspaper written in the 1890s. Uh, don't know if that's exactly how it went. But. I think you could get a lot of dates during that time period. If you could portray yourself as being, uh, Hey, Sue Mundy, don't tell anybody. You're the court guy that they hung up there. Not it, not not so Monday. I'm the real guy. You know? <laughs> so uh, yeah, remember he was 20, and you remember when you were 20, you know? Oh yeah, oh man, <laughs> the hair man. I mean, it was good then. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I guess that wraps it up about uh, Sue Monday. Um, the uh, you know, uh, if you guys hadn't saw uh, the live videos that James and I did just a couple days ago, check those out on our Facebook uh, page. They they've done they've done very well. There's been a lot of people, a lot of views on that. Mm -hmm. So, what's going on with uh, Kentucky History Podcast the next few days? Uh, so we have been on a, I guess you could say, it, a brief hiatus because we've not had a mm -hmm. episode out probably. Past two weeks and probably won't have one out this week either, but it's because we are plugging away at this website and we're going to have us a grand opening or grand reveal next Thursday. So come on by next Thursday and, and a giveaway too. So, uh, so yeah, right here, right here, right here, right here. I guess we can tell them, right? I mean, right here on this yeah. show, you're going to reveal and open up the website and show them all the things that are on there. 
I'm excited mm-hmm. about that because, uh, you know, you'll be able to get a tutorial on uh, how to operate the new website. It's not just a website. It's actually a, uh, an educational teaching tool to uh, the way you're having it organized. You know, I'm real yeah. excited about that. And I, I think that's going to be a big, huge hit. So, uh, yeah. So that's next got, week. Got yeah. A lot of good history. So we're going to try to get it out there. It'll take time. Work in progress, of course. But uh, yeah, we're going to, we're ready to roll it out next, next Thursday. So, yeah, man. Brilliant. Absolutely. You know, we've got all kinds of stuff going on too, for sure. So, <laughs> yeah, man, I guess we'll, uh, I, I, can, I said it earlier. Make sure you guys check it out. Subscribe to the channel so you can see when we're, we're, we're doing these things. And, uh, um, make sure you, uh, that way you can see all our content and stuff, but, uh, anything else you want to say before we take off? That's it, man. Uh, yeah, man. Scored with Kentucky. So the video on the way out, the video on the way out is about Meade County. Reason why this is relevant is because we, Sue Mundy was, ca- well, Marcellus Clark was captured. <laughs> Marcellus Jerome or Jerome Marcellus Clark was captured there in Meade County and Gust outside of Gustin there in the, in the back of barn. But uh, it's it's with uh, Montez from uh, Meade County Local. If you want to check them out, they do all kinds of great stuff, too. And uh, Montez and I have a lot of more videos that we're going to do. But we do talk about Sue Monday in this video. But, uh, mm-hmm. man, I appreciate everybody coming out. And I uh, guess we'll sign off for now. And, uh, hey, remember, family tree nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. Squire Boone, Abe Lincoln. General John Hunt Morgan and gold. Hey everybody, this is Russ from Family Tree Nuts and I'm in Brandenburg in Meade County, Kentucky along the Ohio River and I got my good friend Montez here. You want to tell him who you are? Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Montez McCamish and I am the owner of the Meade County Local. Meade County Local? What's the Meade County Local? Meade County Local reports on everything Meade County, Kentucky. Whether or not it's history like right now, whether or not it's what's going on in the school events, whether or not it's about just a sports happening inside the town, uh, we report it. We put it on there from Meade County. That's awesome. I think that's a really good service to the community, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's, it's been really good. We love being able to uh, give back to the community and uh, have the community know what's going on. And for people that aren't in the community, we like them to know what's going on too. Yeah, that's awesome. So ironically, this is actually the 197th birthday of Meade County, isn't it? Yes, today is the birthday of Meade County. Meade County was founded in December 17, 1823. Oh my gosh, 1823. So before the settlers came here, this area was actually known for quite a bit of something, wasn't it? Yeah, so this area was really inhabited with elk, deer, buffalo, lots of- uh, Buffalo? Yes, yes. Buffalo come right through here, huh? Right through here, just imagine a buffalo coming through Brandenburg. That's amazing to think about, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you guys actually had a pretty famous uh, early settler here to the area, didn't you? Yes, we did. We actually had Daniel Boone's brother, wow. Squire Boone. Squire. He came through and along with his son, Enoch, in 1778. 1778? That's right. Oh my gosh, that's just three years after the settlement of Boonesboro. So there was settlers to this area quite early in Kentucky history. I, I really do think it was just because of all the wildlife that like we spoke about, the buffalo and things like that that were here. Wow. So you were telling me earlier that the uh, area was subject to quite a few Native American attacks, wasn't it? Yeah, so right around the Ohio River, the Native Americans would coast down here, and so what the settlers would do is they would be up in the hillsides, and they would uh, stand watch, and they would peer over, so they'd see whenever the Indians would be coming. Wow, these hillsides right here, huh? Yes, yes, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And you're telling me too that the area had quite a few grinding mills here too, along all the creek banks and things. Yes, Stove Run was one of the very first grinding mills in Kentucky. Wow, and, and, and it was actually built by uh, somebody kind of famous, wasn't it? Yeah, we all hear about uh, Abraham Lincoln, but Who's his that? father, his <laughs> father here, uh, he, he helped build uh, Bill Run. Thomas Lincoln helped build the mill here in town. Yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy how that's, small the world really that's is. That's an amazing connection right here in Meade County. So like we said earlier, the county was founded in 1823, and who's the county named after? James Meade. James Meade, who's James Meade? James Meade was a captain in the War of 1812. Wow, did he survive? No, actually he didn't. He, he was killed at the Battle of Raisin. 
Wow, the Battle of Raisin, that's that uh, famous battle that's known for after the British had defeated the Americans, they took American prisoners and their Native American allies started slaughtering some of the Americans. And that was a big rallying cry, yeah. you know, a big rallying point. For people to sign up for the list. Absolutely. So also you said that church was a big deal early on around here, wasn't it? Yes, four churches would come together and form the Salem Association of Baptists. Wow, and what year was that? That was in 1785. 1785, now you told me earlier that Squire Boone came here in 1778, and this is just seven years later, so population was booming, wasn't it? Yes, it was, it, it really was starting to grow. Uh, I really do think that uh, the Ohio River was a main source uh, for a lot of people to get their goods and then just to branch out. Absolutely. So in the early 1800s, there's a pretty famous artist that came to the area, isn't there? James Audubon, are you familiar? Yeah, I've heard of him, the bird guy. Yeah, so here he would sketch his bird drawings here and then later on, he became quite famous for it. He sure did, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. So during the Civil War, General John Hunt Morgan passed right through here on one of his raids, didn't he? Yeah, right on the Ohio River, he sees two steamboats. Wow, steamboats, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and then he launched one of his raids from right here into Indiana. Wow, right here. A lot of people don't realize about the uh, raids that happened in the north of the Ohio River. Yeah. And launched it right here. Right here, and then right into Indiana. Awesome. And another thing that you guys are famous for is the Confederate guerrilla, Sue Mundy. Yeah, Sue Mundy, uh, he actually... He? Yeah, he. Uh, so, they, so? They, they called him that because of his long hair. Okay. He was uh, actually captured in Guston. In Guston, Guston, which is just a community right here in the, in the county. Just a little ways away. So they captured him here and uh, I guess what happened? They just let him go a little while Well, later? no, then they took him to Louisville and that's when he was hung. He was hung. Huh. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's incredible. They Drastic. weren't falling around. <laughs> no. They weren't falling around, are they? No. So you guys also have the largest Civil War monument in Kentucky, don't you? Yes, it actually came from Louisville, Kentucky, right down the Ohio River. It came on the Ohio River on a barge, I think you said, on right? On a barge, yes. It was so heavy, they didn't have any other way to get it down, so they disassembled it, the pieces that they could, and they brought it down on barge on the Ohio River. Meade County wanted it and Louisville didn't, so we, we took it in. What year was that? That was in 2016. Wow. And the biggest thing that the area is known for is in 1918 was the establishment of Fort Knox. Right. What's Fort Knox? Fort Knox, if any of all have ever heard of 007, yeah. Mr. James Bond, the Gold Vault. Uh, gold Vault. That's where the gold is held, is <laughs> what they say. Can you take me there? Well, I could take you buy it, but not there. You um, think they check my pockets? They probably do more than that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely something the area is really famous for all over the country, Fort Knox gold. Yeah, that gold vault has really got a lot of people staring and wondering, is the gold in there? Is it out? You know, <laughs> it's, it's well known. I've heard they spread it out a little bit, you know, but who knows? Well, awesome. Well, I know we've just scratched the surface on the history of Meade County here in this short video. But uh, thank you so much, Montez, for bringing me here and telling me about this awesome spot. Hey, I know it's cold out. I appreciate you coming, though. Family Tree Nuts is doing a great thing, and I really appreciate you all coming and doing this for Meade County. Absolutely, absolutely. And here we are in the banks of the Ohio River in Meade County, Kentucky, about 45 miles west or so of Louisville, Kentucky. And hey, remember, Family Tree Nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. Like what you see? Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the little bell so you get notifications as to when we post new videos. And you can find out more about us and contact us at familytreenuts.org.